This is going to be biblical proof that the Church of Christ is a satanic cult. The gospel they preach is not the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. The Church of Christ, who are a lot of times called Campbellites because they follow Alexander Campbell, they teach baptismal regeneration, which is that you can be saved by water baptism. A lot of them say, where the scriptures speak, we speak. And where the scriptures are silent, we are silent. They are lying when they say this because the term, the church of Christ, isn't even found in the Bible. But number one, they pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The gospel for the church age that Paul lays out here in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 is a very simple gospel and doesn't say anything about water baptism. The gospel is that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And now look at Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And verse 9, As we said before, so say I now again, If any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. By adding to the simple gospel and add water baptism, they spit in Jesus Christ's face all over again, and Paul goes as far as saying that they are accursed. Over and over again in the Pauline epistles, he makes it clear that we are saved by grace through faith without works. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible is clear we are saved by grace through faith without works. Faith plus nothing. And to add to the simple gospel makes you accursed according to Galatians chapter 1, 8 through 9. Baptism is a good thing and you should be baptized, but it isn't what makes you saved. You get baptized after you believe on Jesus Christ. A man could believe on Jesus Christ for salvation and die before being baptized and would go to heaven just like any other saved person. But now we're going to look at some verses commonly used by the Church of Christ to prove water baptism is necessary for salvation. A verse they will pull out against you and use is Acts 2.38. Some things to know about this verse is that it was before God revealed the gospel of the grace of God to Paul. And there isn't a Christian in the whole entire chapter because they were first called Christians at Antioch in Acts 11.26. Every person here is a Jew or a Jewish proselyte. In the verse 37, they aren't asking, what shall we do to be saved? They're asking, what shall we do? They were asking, what shall we do since we have crucified the Lord Jesus Christ? Start in verse 36 and read in Acts 2. It says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This has nothing to do with a New Testament Christian in the body of Christ 
because we get the gift of the Holy Ghost the moment we believe on Jesus Christ. Romans 8 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Bible is a dangerous book if we don't rightly divide it. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are people who will take Acts 2.38 and will base their whole entire ministry on Acts 2.38 and they will override the clear verses in Romans and Galatians which say we are saved by grace through faith and justified by faith without works. The problem the Church of Christ people have is they make every verse that says the word baptism refer to water baptism. Every time they see the word water they see the word baptism. They see the word baptism, they see water. They see water, they see baptism. For example, look at John 3, 3 through verse 6. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Where Jesus says born of water in John 3, 5, they twist the verse to make it refer to water baptism, when water baptism is nowhere near it. If you look at the context, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus about the new birth and born of water is referring to the first birth when you came out of your mother. In the very next verse it says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. So that's how you know what he's talking about when he says born of water. That which is born of flesh is flesh. So they are resting the scriptures to their own destruction by making John 3, 5 refer to water baptism. Ephesians 4, 4 through 6 says, There is one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. They take Ephesians 4, 5 and make the one baptism refer to water baptism when it is referring to the only baptism which saves. There are actually seven baptism is, baptisms in the Bible and only one baptism which saves. And that is the spirit baptism that puts you into the body of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For what by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. There is only one baptism which saves, but there are more baptisms in the Bible. There is only one true Lord. But 1 Corinthians 5 8 says, God's many and Lord's many. There is more than one spirit. But they'll take the one baptism and, of course, make it refer to water baptism when it isn't even mentioned anywhere close to it. Another one they'll use is Galatians 3 27, which says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. They will insert water baptism into this verse when it isn't even referring to water baptism. It is referring to the only baptism, baptism which saves, and that is when you are baptized into Jesus Christ. As we quoted before, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. They not only add things to verses that aren't there, but they will take away half of the verse to prove their false teaching many times. And another verse they use is Mark 16, 16. It says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And they'll take this verse and apply it to somebody in the church age. And this verse teaches someone gets the Holy Ghost by repentance plus baptism. If a person during that time repented and didn't get baptized physically, he wouldn't get the gifts but this doesn't, pl doesn't apply for the church age. This verse is directed towards the early apostolic age 
when the sign gifts were present. And you know this, the next verse, verse 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. We don't have the apostolic signs now. The Jews rejected Jesus Christ. And Paul says, I go to the Gentiles. When Paul switched from Jew to Gentile, the sign gift ceased. So you can't apply Mark 16, 16 to somebody in the church age. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. My next point is, Paul didn't come to baptize but to preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 1, 14 says, I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. In verse 14 he says, I baptize none of you. In other words, he had no burden for their soul going to hell if you believe like a church of Christ. If Paul believed baptism was necessary for salvation, he would have been trying to baptize everybody. Then in verse 17 he says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Once again, proving baptism isn't even a part of the gospel. And by adding water baptism to the simple gospel, you are spreading a false gospel that Paul didn't preach, and you are cursed by doing so, as the Bible says in Galatians 1, 8-9. My next point is, the Bible talks about people being saved before they are baptized. In Acts 10, 44, it says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they had heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And notice in verse 47 it says they had received the Holy Ghost. And this was before they were baptized. Let's read it again. For any man, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have, the, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So they received the Holy Ghost before they even got baptized. They were saved before baptism. Romans 8, 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, this shows a man doesn't, if a man doesn't have the Holy Spirit inside of him, then he's not even saved. So if you are following the teaching of this satanic cult, known as the Church of Christ, then you should consider the facts that they pervert the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. If we believe on Him, we can be saved and have eternal life. They add water baptism to that simple gospel, and they are a curse for doing so if you go by Galatians 1, 8 through 9. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith without works in Romans 4, 5 and Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And the adding of water baptism for salvation makes it a faith plus work system. They claim to speak where the scriptures speak and to be silent where the scriptures are silent when they do the exact opposite. Because they always add the word water when it says baptism and add the word baptism when it says water. There are seven different baptisms in the word of God and only one of them saves and that is when we are baptized into Jesus Christ's body when we believe on him to save us. They are no different than any Bible corrector or perverter because these Campbellites will adjust the Bible to fit their belief instead of adjusting their belief to fit the Bible. And they rest the scriptures to, the own destruction, to their own destruction as it talks about in 2 Peter 3.16. Their beliefs make Paul out to be a false teacher because he said Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel. They must believe Paul had no burden for the lost people. The church of Christ is also lying because in Acts 10 you read where some had already received the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. 
So to say a man has to be baptized in H2O to be saved is a lie and against the Bible. So I hope I have proved to you that the Church of Christ is a satanic cult. And if you're going to one of these churches, you should leave the church and uh, become a Bible believer. Get a King James Bible. Follow 2 Timothy 2.15, which says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You shouldn't adjust the Bible to fit your beliefs. You should just adjust your beliefs to fit the Bible. But I hope this study has helped you and maybe helped you debate one of these Church of Christ people. But always remember, rely on God's word and not what some Church of Christ pastor is saying because the Bible says, Let God be true and every man a liar. If he's going against these scriptures I've showed you, then he's a liar.